the Arduino can't do a thing and is way too expensive. What my favorite alternative is and why we still have to love the Arduino, I tell you in this video. Also, I show you how to run the first piece of code on an Arduino Uno and on an ESP32 in the Arduino development environment right after the intro. <music> If I claim that the Arduino can do a thing, then this is of course completely exaggerated. But nowadays, in comparison to other microcontrollers, the Arduino has become quite expensive. The widely distributed Arduino Uno has no Wi-Fi and no Bluetooth, while for example the ESP32, my favorite alternative to the Arduino, comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Well, one must say that the Arduino Uno has certainly a few days more on the hump, but even if we take a look at an Arduino model that has similar features as the ESP32, but see for yourself. Before we take a look at the devices again, here is a brief explanation why we must love the Arduino anyway. What the team of Arduino achieved was simply an excellent complete package. A simple microcontroller, comparatively cheap at that time, together with a development environment that is easy to use. And on top of that, we get a framework that is not overly complicated. This complete package finally led to the fact that many people have started programming microcontrollers. Among hobby electronics and in schools STEM education, tinkering with microcontrollers has become quite normal today. So. Here we have an Arduino Uno. You can see here the processor from Atmel. Sensors or LEDs or other components on the breadboard are connected via the pin headers and jumper cables. This Arduino Uno has a USB type B connector for connection to the computer and for power supply. Alternatively, you can power the board via a power supply with a hollow plug or you can also power the Arduino Uno via a specific power in pin. In comparison, here we have some ESPs. You can see right away that they are much smaller. Here we have an ESP8266 and this is an ESP32. The components for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the microcontroller are hidden under this metal lid the ESP8266 then just without Bluetooth. You can also see all the pins to connect the components. This one doesn't have a pin header soldered on yet, while this ESP here already has a pin header on it. Due to the pin headers, the ESP can be used on a breadboard, so you can connect the pins of the ESPs with the components without a soldering iron. The component with the angular snake line at one end is the Wi-Fi antenna. These boards are powered and connected to the computer via micro USB, but you can also power the board via the 3 volt pin and in a separate posting I explain how to power the ESP with batteries. Ok, now we have an overview of the Arduino and ESP hardware, now let's compare the inner values. For this I have created a small table. In the table I listed which features the different Arduino boards and ESP8266 and ESP32 have. I have not listed all Arduino boards because there are so many different ones. I just picked out the classic Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano and then I picked out another Arduino which comes close to the ESP boards in terms of features, namely with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it, the Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010. Let's go through the table. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We can quickly see only the Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010 and the ESP32 have that. The ESP8266 has Wi-Fi but no Bluetooth as stated already. Memory. That's where it gets interesting. Memory is important when it comes to the maximum size of the program you can load on the microcontroller. Once your programs get bigger, memory is immensely important. GPIO. This is the number of pins that are on each board. Here you need to know you can't use every pin freely. Some are blocked for internal processes. Some are for power supply. But this is true for all microcontroller boards. But the tendency is correct that the ESP32 has more pins than the ESP8266 or the Arduino MKR. In CPU we can see which processor has the highest clock speed. The higher the clock speed, the faster calculations are performed. Special feature of the ESP32, it has a real dual-core processor. That means it can run two processors in parallel. 
Operating voltage. Also interesting, this isn't the power supply for the board, but sort of how much voltage comes out of the pins to power the sensors or LEDs or other components. In the past, this was more complicated because there were usually only 5 volt compatible components and then we had to work with level shifters if your board worked with 3.3 volt. Today, this is not a problem anymore. You can get most components for 3.3 volt boards. And finally, the price. And there you can see quite fast the ESP32 has the best features and a comparatively low price compared to an Arduino board with similar features. So, Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano? Actually, there's no reason to use the Uno. The Uno and Nano are virtually the same hardware. Both can do the same and the Nano is a bit cheaper. The only exception. If you want to use shields that are built in the Arduino Uno form factor, then of course they only fit on the Arduino Uno. And which ESP should you use? The ESP32 also has Bluetooth, is a bit faster and has faster Wi-Fi. If you want to be on the safe side, then just take the ESP32. Personally, I had bad luck with the ESP8266, got five of them, but no one was working for me. Uploading a program to any of them has always aborted. Maybe I fell for cheap imitations, who knows. Therefore, I'm happily stuck with the ESP32. Okay, after the feature comparison, now let's do a little practice comparison. Let's take a look at how to connect the devices and how to load the first program on the Arduino you know and the ESP32. For this, we use the Arduino development environment, also called Arduino IDE. To connect, simply plug the USB Type-B connector into the Arduino board and the USB Type-A and into the computer. By then, some of the LEDs on the board should already be blinking. We start the Arduino IDE and there we create a new sketch and save it. First, for comparison, we take a simple blinky code. This is the Hello World equivalent in the world of microcontrollers. In the code we first define to use the pin 4 to control the LED, so our LED needs to be connected to the pin 4. In the setup method we say that pin 4 should only put out power, so this pin should not listen for input, like a switch for example. And in the loop we set the current of pin 4 alternately to high and low. In example the LED is turned on and off. Between high and low we set some delays, because otherwise we wouldn't see the on and off state clearly because it changes to fast. At the top, the switch with the arrow icon finally loads the program to the microcontroller. If everything worked, the console prints out a corresponding message and our LED is blinking now. Now let's do the same thing again with the ESP32. To do this, we first disconnect the Arduino and then we need a micro USB cable to connect the ESP to the computer and supply it with power. Also, we need to reconnect the cables on the breadboard so that the LED is now connected to the pin 4 of the ESP and, of course, we need to connect to ground. When you use the ESPs for the first time in the Arduino IDE, you must first add them to the so-called board manager so that the Arduino IDE can address the ESPs correctly. To do this, there is a menu in Arduino Settings the field Additional Board Manager URLs. Here we need to add two addresses. One address for the ESP32 boards and one address for the ESP8266 boards. Then enter both URLs and the field separated by a comma. Then confirm with OK and then in the menu under Tools, Board, various ESP boards are now available. We must also make sure that the correct USB port is set on macOS. This is usually this slab underscore USB to a UART and on Windows this would be a COM port. If we now send the code to the microcontroller the LED should flash again, but this time controlled by the ESP32. As you can see, you only need to have the ESPs added to the board manager once. After that, programming runs the same way as with an Arduino. Side note, by adding the program via the Arduino IDE, we also played the Arduino framework on the ESP. This means that we are now using, well, the Arduino framework. The manufacturer Espressive offers its own framework called ESP IDF, but since the Arduino framework is so popular, it was ported for the ESPs. By the way, by the way, 
I almost don't develop in the Arduino IDE anymore because the development environment doesn't offer enough features for me anymore. For larger projects, it quickly becomes confusing. I also created a post about using VS Code and Platform IO as an alternative IDE for programming ESPs and Arduino. But of course, we still love the Arduino IDE too. See ya. By the way, almost I almost, by the way, I almost don't develop in the Arduino ID anymore because the development environment, the development environment, oh, come on, by the way, by the way, again and again and again, by the way, the development environment, oh, come on, it's for shit. <laughs> by the way,